the Labour Parliamentary Candidate for Harrow East. <laughs> MP for Harry. We have a really far right government. We need to change it. Now, what I hear in the media, I don't hear in the media that talking about the far right government that have done these terrible things. Leaving somebody who's got cancer terrified that they're going to be called for a work capability assessment and they're left with no money, so they get into rentaries and they lose their home. But what do we get from the media is attacking the Labour Party, attacking Jeremy Corbyn as somehow being extreme. Is it extreme that you want a roof over your head? Is it extreme that you want a job where you have security? No. Is it extreme that you want food on the table? No. And is it extreme that if you become homeless, you're not told that you have to be sent to Yorkshire or Birmingham? No. no. So we're not extreme. When I knew Jeremy all those years ago, I thought he was a really decent man. And when he stood as leader, I thought that's fantastic because he has policies that I agree with, that I could really sign up to and be proud to canvas for, Proud to stand as a candidate, proud to say I'm a Labour member with somebody like Jeremy as the leader. He is, I think, one of the most principled and honest yeah. politicians. Yeah. And I'm absolutely delighted to welcome, welcome him to Harrow East. So, Jeremy Paul. somebody that's exposed austerity so many ways and will be an absolutely brilliant MP speaking up for everybody in this community. I know full well that people in our party voted, voted both leave and remain. I know full well that people in the country voted both leave and remain. And they voted for our, our party at the last election. I hope they'll vote for our party at this election. Whether you voted leave or you voted remain, you live in a country that is increasingly divided. You live in a country where austerity has been brutal on the poorest and most vulnerable people in our society, has damaged all our public services, and reaches through even to those that think or thought they were relatively well off because they were moving into later middle age and they were looking forward to winding down in life, suddenly find because of austerity, because of what the uh, Liberal Democrat and Conservative Coalition did, they're now funding their young, their young children through university and having to pay for the social care of their elderly and borrow money or remortgage their homes in order to get there. Ten years of austerity that we've had. What's happened? Homelessness has gone up. Poverty levels have gone up. Food bank usage has gone up. Begging has gone up. Those with disabilities, discrimination has got worse. The horrors of the way in which universal credit operates has got worse. All of that, at the same time, there's been tax write-offs and tax giveaways to the very wealthiest within our society. We've become one of the most divided societies in Europe, and we're heading to get worse and worse and worse the longer this Tory government, or any form of Tory government, stays in office. And so, when they attack us, for what they call an extreme program. I am extremely concerned about levels of poverty in this country, about the levels of division within our society, about the way in which the far right exploit those divisions and try to divide us on grounds of ethnicity, language, nationality, or whatever else it happens to be. I simply say this, we're bigger than that, better than that, more powerful than that, and we will not be divided by these races. That is the society deliberately created by the political choice, and it was a political choice of austerity in 2010. And that is why we will negotiate with the EU for a, an agreement, which would be of a customs union, of market access and protection of rights within three months, 
and we put that alongside Remain in a ballot of the people of this country and we would carry out the result, whatever it was, in order to bring people together and ensure we don't end up being an offshore tax haven outside Europe. Instead, we're a trading partner with them and we're not going to then go into a sweetheart trade deal with Donald Trump and the USA in the hands of Boris Johnson. That um, over the past few weeks, uh, officials acting under instruction from ministers in his government have been meeting big pharmaceutical companies in the USA in order to discuss medicine prices and access to our NHS. That is really what is at stake. Are we going to go down that road where a trade arrangement with the USA says they want access to the UK health market, as they call it. Well, the last time I looked, it was called the National <laughs> Health Service. And the market in healthcare essentially closed down in 1948 when we set up the National <laughs> Health Service. on all of that and we challenge them on the austerity that has been so brutal to people's lives in this country. The Conservatives and Liberal Democrats went into office in 2010. And what did they do? Brought in a budget. That budget slashed expenditure for local government. Harrow Council alone has lost £50 million over the past few years. And you multiply that by every other London borough, multiply that all over the country. And what does it all add up to? Closed youth centres, out of price sports facilities, overcrowded classrooms, a million mainly older people waiting for social care, council workers losing their jobs, those who remain in employment of local authorities doing effectively two or almost three people's work in order to make services survive. The moral blackmail on public employees by austerity is absolutely astounding. And that we should take for a moment and say thank you to all those that have managed to keep the services running. But you should not be treated in this way by this or any other government. So it is about how we end austerity and invest in our public services and invest in the future of the people of this country. And that is the message we're going to be putting out in this election campaign all over the country. The media have been uh, slightly critical individually of one or two of us. And it also <laughs> sometimes actually amounts almost to abuse. I simply say this to lay down the marker at the beginning of this campaign. I'm not getting in the gutter with anybody. They go low, we go high. They go lower, we go higher. They go into the bargain basement, we go into the stratosphere. We're not playing that game. An incoming Labour government will do a number of things. Firstly, we will bring in a real living wage of £10 an hour and end the youth rate on the national minimum wage. So I think it's an our plans are for a national investment bank. That national investment bank will cover, obviously, the whole of the UK. But it will also be paralleled with regional investment banks. Regional investment banks in North East, North West, East and West Midlands, South West, London, and so on. So that there is fair investment all across the country, not just in infrastructure projects, but also on services, housing, and all the other things that are so absolutely essential to our lives. And we have to face up to the biggest issue of our times, the biggest issue that any of us will ever face in our lives. That is the environmental and climate emergency that is affecting us. <laughs> we set out a message, a message of inclusion, a message of hope, and a message of opportunity. And we look at education and what it gives to all of us and what it gives to young people in our society. 
Our conference voted strongly to support the establishment of a national education service. A national education service, the principle behind it is to take the commodity out of education and insert the right to education. It means the proper funding of primary schools, it means investment in creative education, in music and art education, which we will do, and it means bringing back Sure Start centres around the country, which is such a great achievement of the last day of government. We've done so much to help parents and children along. And so, as we go through the education years, I think we spend rather too much time <coughs> testing and examining and inspecting our children, and I think we should look at all that again. We have decided, and this will be in our party policy, that we will end testing at Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2 in primary schools. Because of the stress that it and also change Ofsted from its form of inspection into something more like the older HMI, which was a supportive form of education of uh, uh, our children. But it's also about bringing all our schools into the family of local education, re-empowering the local education authority. So you do everything you can here in Harrow to win this constituency. To win this constituency, to put Pamela in as your MP, but above all to put her in as part of a Labour majority in Parliament. And when we've won that election, it doesn't stop there. That's where stage two begins, changing our society, bringing about that sense of inclusion, of cooperation in society, a government that is on the side of those people that need a government on their side rather than the kind of thing we've got at the present time. And you know what? With our determination and our confidence, we can win this election. Our chance, our chance to deliver for the people of this country the government that they deserve. In the mirror of the great achievements of past Labour governments, particularly the 1945-51 to 51 Labour government. A government that will challenge the monopolies, challenge the very wealthiest in our society. A government that will deliver for the people as a whole. I'm absolutely totally up for it and totally determined to achieve it. We're going to be on the road all over the country. There is no town, no village that will be left alone by Labour. There are no no-go areas for Labour. Our message goes everywhere. Our message goes everywhere. Come with us on this journey. Come with us on this determination. from your next MP. Now, thank you, Jeremy. Absolutely inspiring. Fantastic. We need Jeremy as the Prime Minister. The strongest...